Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In process improvement, there is a strong focus on data. But in order to analyze data for an improvement project, you need to know what type of data you have or the type of data you need so you can perform the correct analysis, which can help you fix the potential problem you're working on. So I share in this podcast some different types of data you may encounter that you may consider or need for your project. The first type of data is the simplest one, and that's a pass-fail data or yes-no data. Sometimes this is called defective because it's either defective or not. So it's a yes-no answer. Another way to look at it is it's early or late. So yes or no, we got it there on time. And so most of the time we can get this type of data. So examples would be, did an item get completed correctly? Yes or no. Did it pass our criteria? Yes or no. Should we bring this candidate in for an interview? Yes or no. And did it get completed on time? If we want to go a little bit more deeper, we can roll up a few of those into some kind of a success rate or a yield. So what is the percentage of items complete and accurate that you received from a prior process? What is the yield of the process? So how many of the documents were completed correctly out of the total? How many candidates did we bring in for an interview out of the total? Then just the data in its raw format of yes and no. So that data, when it's looked at as a percentage over a larger sample, acts a little bit more like measurable data. And we'll talk about that later. But you can do a little bit more analysis with that than just to total. Um, this is also called discrete data. So it's got many different names. The second type of data is count data. This is where we're looking at how many things happen. And you could have more than one thing go wrong on a single item. So when we're dealing with defective data, it's either yes or no. Count data could say, well, how many things went wrong? Just one thing or five things or 10 things. It all gets counted as uh, a, a problem that it didn't meet the criteria, but we also might want to track how many things didn't meet the criteria. You could also look at how many calls were resolved per hour, or how many customer orders did we get per month, and how many complaints did we get per customer. So when we get data broken down in that level, we can also do more analysis with that than just the raw number itself. You know, So the original part would be get numbers like five, three, seven, two. Integers. And you can do some analysis with integers uh, but there's not a lot of granularity in the data because you don't have decimals. But when you do customer orders per month, you might get something like 37.3. So that decimal point really helps with getting granularity in our data, and it opens up more analysis options for us. So the third type of data is variable or measurement data. And this shows up in many different formats, but this is ideal because you can get very granular in your measurements, probably down to a decimal point. So if you're taking an individual rate reading and you can get down to a decimal point uh, or could possibly, if you had the right measurement equipment, then we're probably talking about measurement data or variable data. So cost data is considered measurements because you can get down to you know fractions of a dollar. So cost of um, poor quality, uh, the cost of a part to order, the material cost of what you're purchasing, something like that. You can also normalize cost data as well, down to cost per unit or per day or cost per defect or issue. The next one is time data. It's also measurements because you could get a stopwatch and get pretty granular. You can get down to fractions of seconds if you wanted to. But even just logging the timestamps of transactions from when something started to when it completed, we can do subtractions and figure out how many minutes or seconds or days or weeks or months. And you can get 3.2 months or 1.7 days. And that makes sense. So any time data can be analyzed as measurement data. If you're taking actual results off the process, oftentimes you'll need some kind of device or equipment. Maybe you're measuring the thickness of a, a part or the luminance output of a light source or the weight or the processing speed of the computer, or the electrical output power being generated. Most of these you can get in a decimal format, but you'll need some kind of piece of equipment to actually take that reading. You can't do that with just your eyes or um, by, your, by yourself. 
So under the variable data, we have cost data, time data, and then actual measurements off the process or product or service. So most people start off with the pass fail data, and then they may evolve into count data. But really that's gonna be limiting until you get uh, up to a certain performance level. Maybe you'll get into the 90% yield or success rate with that data. For you to get higher than that and go into the 99% success or 99.99 .99 success or Six Sigma performance, you're gonna to have to get into the variable or measurement data. So one example I'll see is a, a report of the errors that were found, and it'll show a bunch of pass and fail results. And so my next question is, how do I get the raw data that went into the underlying analysis where the pass-fail decision was made? There's got to be some kind of criteria that was uh, understood or, or decided upon where we can see, okay, the, the result was this, and it, if it's above this or below this, then we're going to put a fail, and if it's inside of this range, we're going to call it a pass. I want to see that raw data, and that's where we can get to the next level of of improvement is being able to see the actual number. So let's take an example. In the past, I've talked about my trip to Micronesia to work with green banana paper. So for them, in their pass-fail data, they might look at the number of defective wallets that they produced and look at each individual wallet and say, did it meet the quality criteria, yes or no? And they could also look at that over a certain time period and say, what is the percentage of defective wallets that we have? You know, if we have three defective out of 20, then you could look at it as a 15% defective rate. If they went to count data, they could look at how many defects were found, because there could be many different things that are wrong with the wallet. They could have the wrong stitch. They could have had a problem with the placement of the stitch. There could be a scratch on the outside coating and cover. They could have excess thread being exposed. So if they counted up how many things were wrong, they might find out that there's eight total defects that they found over those three units. And so they could look at eight defects out of 20, and they could calculate that there's 0.4 defects per wallet. And then if they went to more specific measurements or variable data, they might actually measure the thickness of the wallet or the length of a stitch. Or if we looked at the time data, the time to complete a certain process or sub-process within the operation. If they looked at cost data, they could look at the cost of the wallet or the labor hours per wallet. So these are different examples of data they could collect. Again, if you start, you might start off with pass-fail data, but you want to move to count data and then ultimately try to figure out a way to get variable or measurement data. It will allow you to open up and look at way more statistical analysis tools that could be used and if you can't get that data, then we want to at least normalize the data into a yield number or a, a number of items per hour or per product or per unit. And so we get some kind of normalized performance data. Then we can use that data and look for trends and patterns in it. So I hope that was helpful to understanding the different types of data. As always, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out through my website, biz-pi.com or you can ask a question through the Anchor app. Thanks. Want to better organize your work area or bring 5S methods into your organization? Check out the 5S guide from Creative Safety Supply. You also get three free bonuses. Bonus number one, free 5S poster. Bonus number two, free 5S PowerPoint. And bonus number three, free 5S audit card. Go to leansigsigmaforgood.com slash 5S for the free downloads. They also provide floor tape markings, labels, signs, foam tool organizers, red tags, label printers, and other organization tools. Make sure you use code BPI at checkout to save 10%.